because I'm teaming up with my good friend, retired Navy SEAL Jocko, and we're gonna do something very special. Jocko started Jocko Fuel after finding out some of the supplements that he was buying for his family were filled with heavy metals and ingredients he wasn't aware of. He wanted a line of supplements and consumables that had all of the good, effective ingredients and none of the bad. So he made it happen. I got set up with all of the key products and I want to do the same for you. Jocko Go, they are energy drinks for clean, sustainable energy. Jocko Milk Protein for 30 grams of delicious grass-fed protein, plus a whole line of supplements to support mood, focus, hydration, and more. Jocko Fuel supplements are scientifically formulated and made with ingredients that are clinically tested. They are better for you options with no added sugar or artificial sweeteners and no gray area ingredients or banned substances. It is clean fuel without compromise and right now, you can get 20% off when you use the promo code CHAIL at JockoFuel.com or just click on the link below. Dana can't breathe right now. He cannot breathe before the announcement of the main event for 300 without me thinking it's related, judging the sigh, judging what he was wearing, judging where he was looking, judging how many times he blinked when he made the statement. I am completely hooked. What is going to be 300? Now, let me just give you an example. Dana came out today and he said the opening bout is going to be Garbrandt versus Figueroa. It's for 300. Now, 100% Dana White's point is to let you know how loaded this card is. This card is so stacked for bear that two world champions are going to go toe-to-toe -to -toe in the opening fight of the night, which, by the way, for one of the only times in company history will be sold out. And that's a part that I hope the marketing team gets behind because it's going to be right. It's a hard thing to promise, but I'm, I'm telling you right now. MMA fans are very different from boxing fans. Very different. But we also get promised. We have a different deal. We, we get a five-fight main card that we're promised by the promoter. But it will be full when Garbrandt and Figueroa fight the opening match of the night, which will leave the locker rooms at 3.30. And I'll even predict for you, because it's UFC 300, they're going to buy some time, and those guys will likely make the walk at 315 for the fight and bell to ring at 330, which is fascinating. That means people are, are leaving the hotel for the arena at just past noon. Might stop, they might get some lunch, but it'll be, it'll be all in one. This is going to be, it's going to be awesome. And this is Dana's point. Dana's point. But why did he make it? He's never done that before, so why did he do it here? No reason? Was it no reason at all? There was no on sale, by example. There wasn't a new distribution partner. There wasn't a new t-shirt out. Said UFC 300, buy it today. There was no reason to make that point, so why did he make the point? In the history of UFCs, he has never... In the form of a press release, stated what the opening match of the night would be. Why did he do it here? Is it just because it's so good? Is it just because it is two world champions and it's 300? Maybe. Maybe. Or is it because you don't have your main event? And... Everything that he has said, I have taken at his word. I think it's one of my problems. I think I am making a mistake. But the reason I'm not going to correct my behavior, I'm having fun. This is fun for me. I've never been in a spot like that. I'm just a fan. It's a fan of my career spot. I'm a fan when I can talk to you guys now. I'm just a fan. I've never got to have fun guessing what a card is. This is my first time. Like, I could call Dan, and I don't know that he would tell me. I mean, if it really was a secret, he's, he's not going to tell. But I, I would get enough information. So why don't I do it? Well, I don't, want, I don't want to know. I'm having fun. I'm having fun guessing. But 
when I say I took everything in his word, I mean, let me just give you a few of those words. It's going to be jaw-dropping. We aren't even going to be able to handle it. It's such a big fight. Now, I understand the laws of attraction. I understand trying to align the universe. And I understand good intention, right? Hell is paved on the path of good intentions. And that's where those went. And I didn't know that. I didn't know that until it was revealed to me when it was stated. In fact, I have two great fights in mind, and I haven't decided which one I'm going to go with. Ooh, okay. What well, that means, I don't, ha I don't have a fight yet. I got two ideas. I got two ideas that can meet the criteria of jaw-dropping. I got two ideas that you're not going to be able to handle. I got two ideas they are going to melt the airwaves. But I don't have either bird in the hand. That's what that meant. And one of those ideas I can confirm for you accurately was Izzy versus DDP. I knew that fight had been offered. Now, if I'm to be completely transparent with you, neither DDP or Izzy was told it was going to be main event, but both Izzy and DDP believed it was going to be. What do you do with that? How do you draw that distinction? Uh, I don't know how to. That's why I'm just handing it to you. You do what you want with that. They both thought when they were negotiating that they were negotiating a main event. The pay and the structure for it made them feel as though it was main event, but the pay and the structure would not change in title versus main event. And see, that's where it's a, it's a, there's a little bit of unclarity there. And the only reason I bring that to you is that is gone. That's gone. That's not going to happen. And I'm not positive that that would drop anybody's draw considering we had already been promised it in August of last year. And there was some real excitement, but it wasn't dropping draws back then. So, what's left? And if we're going to bring somebody in out of retirement, that would drop the draws. For sure. You do a Khabib, you do a George St. Pierre, you drop people's jaws. You have a problem, though, which is they are not compliant with USADA. I understand USADA's gone, but I also watched, I watched the press release the day Hunter and Novitsky told USADA, here's your hat, what's your hurry? And one thing that they were very cautious to do it was quite possibly the most intelligent move of the night. That was a big game of chess they were playing with USADA. But the checkmate there is when Hunter gave them their hat and showed them the door. He said, oh, and by the way, we've heard all of your suggestions and recommendations, and we're going to take them all. Not because we have to, and not even because we necessarily agree with them. We're just going to take them all anyway, so that there's no debate. And one of those points, that is it specifically pointed at Connor, was that he needed to wait 180 days upon his return. If it's good for Connor, it's going to be good for everybody, which is why I'm telling you the return is so damn unlikely. And it's unlikely for other reasons than just that, but it's just so damn unlikely. So now, one of the problems with doing a matchup within a division, with doing any kind of a parody, of doing any kind of a rematch is, is you, you would automatically lose the criteria of you can't handle this. If I've already seen it once and I've proved I can handle it. If it's a champion, which most certainly UFC 300 gets capped off with a title. Can we agree on that? We don't know anything, but can we agree that if we're operating with any type of sense, we, we have to, to start with that. You might get lucky making a guess in some other direction and it sticks, but for any level of sophistication and any level of showing that you pay attention, can we agree that it has to be for a title? Okay, great. Run up and down those titles. Run up and down them any way you want. Pick any champion. Now, go look at the roster. Put them with anybody in the top 10. We don't go outside of the top five. And there's only one exception to what I just said in modern times, which was Sean Strickland, who came in at number six when he challenged. We don't go out of the top five. So let's just go the top 10. Do you have anybody in the top 10 in any division versus a champion of any city division that would be a fight that you just couldn't handle, that would drop your draw? No, you don't. Do you have any fight with any sitting champion against anybody in the top 10 of any division 
that has some kind of heat on it right now that we're wondering what is the holdup? Oh, and by the way, one other criteria that is not already signed. No, no, you sure don't. No, we already got Volkanovsky taking on Deporia. And we already got Sugar Sean, who is vying for the stars, sports, sports' biggest star. Sean was chasing Izzy down as Izzy was chasing Connor down. Connor is not currently licensed, and Izzy has not announced he's coming back. You better believe, you better believe Sugar Sean's that big, because he is. But he's already booked. So, you then do have an outside chance. Like, believing, believing, we've had two UFC hundreds, right? One was called 100, one was called 200. One thing that they both had in common was a feature on heavyweights. Brock Lesnar was the star of UFC 200. I know that pains you, and I know you don't want to admit it, and I know that's not even the way you remember it. He wasn't the main event, and it wasn't a time. Brock Lesnar was the star. They quite literally, when they signed Brock, upped ticket prices a collectively 22.5%. Did you know that? They did. Brock was the star. Brock was also the star and the main event of 100. Now, I don't think you'd be right to say collectively the theme there is Brock. I think you'd be right collectively to understand that the big boys still rule the day and heavyweight is still the most coveted division. I think you would also be right to look at the board and understand how bizarre it is that Tom Aspinall your most decorated and excitable and sellout and monetizable heavyweight has no fight. That makes no sense. So then you start to wonder, well, who are you going to put him against? And Piera starts to become more of a possibility. I think that from a sleeper standpoint of satisfying Title fight, didn't see that coming. Given an opportunity to a guy to be three-time, three-time, three-time champion would definitely fit the bill of storyline. I think that it is leading from a realistic standpoint of not seeing some rock turned over and bring somebody back. I, I think that it has to be considered. We have one title being contested, which is Max versus Justin. Now, that is an awesome fight. It has one problem. Nobody ever asked to see Max versus Justin. That includes Max and his managers. That includes Justin and his managers. None of you, that never, ever was asked for. So it's got just a little... <sighs> Just a little, little hint, right? We, we, we had a champion within the BMF, and he was the sport's second biggest star. His name was George Mosville, and we fought him multiple times, but he never got to put that belt up. So now we're giving a lesser star and a lesser draw in a lesser fight. Colby Covington versus George Moswell in a main event of a pay-per-view for the BMF of which George was reigning champion greatly trumps undercard 300 Max and Justin. Greatly. But we didn't put the belt up there. We are here. Two guys in two different weight classes that nobody asked for. I love it. I love the fight. It doesn't mean you don't still have to worry about a problem of looking desperate. Now, they brought it in and signed it at the right time. Had they brought, had they not brought that in and signed that yet? They've got the whole rest of the card to go, and then they announce that, and they're doing this interchangeable gender or 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 or, or, or weight class shit. So now, if you come up with a main event of two five versus heavy, now you, you're looking like, man, I didn't have anything else to do. Doing weird things are fun, I agree, and doing weird fun things are jaw dropping because we don't get to have a whole lot of fun over here. But if you do multiple weird things, you either got to steer into it and go, "This is the theme of the night. I'm bringing you parody. You can't get anywhere else. 
Okay, great. If that's what you're doing, give me three, four, five of those matches. I'm in. You give me two of those matches. It sounds like. Well, doesn't sound like something you intended to do. So for UFC 300, I'm great at coming over and picking it apart. I'm great at telling you all the things that we can't do. I'm not confident that I have been clever or creative or insightful enough to accurately predict for you what we're going to do.